Hello, and welcome to AWS Analytics Learning Series. My name is Harsha Kadiparthi, and I am a specialist senior solutions architect covering analytics at Amazon Web Services. Today, you're going to learn AWS Glue Studio fundamentals and how to author your first ETL job and monitor it using Glue Studio Demo. This is part one of a three-part series where the second part will dive deep into using a few Glue transformations that help you author complex ETL jobs. And then the part three helps you build streaming ETL jobs using Glue Studio. For those of you who are not familiar with AWS Glue, it is a fully managed ADL service that offers four key capabilities. A central data catalog, which is a Hive Metastore compatible catalog that helps you crawl any supported data sources and populate your data catalog. It offers a fully serverless Spark Python runtime engine to run batch data processing jobs or streaming applications. Glue enables data engineers to handle complex data quality problems such as matching inconsistent patient names, customer names, et cetera. And finally, helps build a robust DevOps CI CD pipelines to visually author ETL jobs and orchestrate the jobs using Glue workflows. Prior to Glue Studio, customers relied on Glue notebooks or their own code development IDEs like PyCharm, IntelliJ to write lines of ETL code when authoring ETL jobs. AWS Glue Studio provides an easy to use graphical interface for creating, running, and monitoring AWS ETL jobs. Exporting, to, uh, speaking to customers, we learned that not all ETL developers want to learn and write Spark code and preferred a rapid development IDE framework to author jobs without writing code. There is a single pane of glass for, to visually monitor all your jobs and author both streaming and batch ETL jobs using the same interface. And it's important to note that Glue Studio allows a hybrid development framework for developers to write custom code for complex transformations using custom code snippets within Glue Studio. Stay tuned for more on this later in part two of this series. For those developers who can accomplish their ETL tasks using Glue dynamic frame transforms available in the studio, they can rely completely on Visual Studio without having to write any code. This flexibility offers best of both creating a hybrid development experience. Again, the persona we intended for Glue Studio are ETL developers and data engineers who do not have Spark skills due to which Glue was inaccessible for them in the past. Glue Studio has three components. Any source that you previously cataloged in your AWS Glue catalog, then use one or more of the transformation functions available to transform your data. And finally, write the data to a target, whether it be S3 or any target previously added to the Glue Studio. So in this Glue demo, Glue demo, you're going to see three things. You'll see a quick walkthrough of Glue Studio IDE, and then you'll see how a developer will use Glue Studio to author a job without writing any code. And finally, monitoring the, that job or, or the set of jobs using the Glue Studio monitoring interface. So with no further delay, let's jump right in. All right, I already logged into my AWS console and here's my Glue landing page. And on the left-hand pane, you see Glue Studio under ETL. And when you click on it, it'll take you to the Glue Studio landing page. Expand the left-hand pane and there are a few options. Uh, jobs, uh, which is where you author your ETL jobs. We're gonna look at this more in detail in a little bit. Monitoring is your single pane of glass to help you monitor all the um, jobs in your cluster, uh, oh, sorry, in your AWS account. And here you can see the total number of jobs that were run in that period of time that you can select here in the range. And it gives you a nice view of what are all the jobs successful and failed, how many um, DPUs, which is basically translating back into the costs uh, that all of those jobs collectively have uh, consumed. And uh, you can see just the you know job types, the breakdown of the time that it has taken, et cetera, right? And then if you scroll down further, these are the jobs that are basically run in your account, uh, not just the AWS Glue Studio. So you can click on any of these jobs and, and uh, you can obviously look at the logs or click on view run to quickly see why they have failed. 
um, or even you know any other parameters like what time, uh, you know how long they've taken before they failed, and if they were successful, you can basically see metrics like how much memory they've used, uh, CPU cycles, etc. Right, uh, data movement, etc. So, so great way to monitor the jobs without having to go through a lot of uh, logs. And then the left hand pane also has something called connectors. Uh, this is a, more of a recent release, and there are a few connectors that are pre-created uh, in the marketplace that you can actually purchase some that are available for cost uh, or, or use ones that are available for free, like the ones I picked here, like Hoodie Connector. Or if I want to bring data from from, Glue, from Google BigQuery, then I have a connector between AWS Glue and uh, BigQuery. And similarly, if I want to write data into an Elasticsearch cluster, then I also have it, right? So you click on the marketplace, and you, here you basically get to search and then select the ones that you want and then and then deploy it, right? So so they're pretty uh, nicely made available for you to quickly deploy and start using in your pipelines. All right, let's go ahead and author the first job using the jobs link here on the left-hand pane and selecting the blank graph to create an empty canvas. Before creating the job, let's consider a very commonly seen data engineering scenario where a developer is required to join product reviews data set in a transactional Aurora MySQL database with a trusted customer dimension table in an enterprise data warehouse redshift so that the analysts in the data lake can gain access to both customer and product reviews data set to gain insights, which means we're basically writing that final data set that we are fetching from a MySQL transaction source and a Redshift data warehouse and writing it into an S3 data lake and then creating a catalog so that the analysts can start analyzing. So as a prerequisite to using Glue Studio, we have previously created a Glue catalog entry for the product review data set in MySQL. And here you can see the classification coming as MySQL. This has been previously crawled by the Glue crawler and you know you can see the entries here. And similarly, we've done that, done the same for the Redshift tables. We're only interested in the customer table here that will be used in the uh, Glue Studio demo. So the developer would start by creating a name for his job and We'll say demo dash 1821 and uh, click the plus sign here, which will create a node. And the node is as simple as uh, can be as any source, can be any transformation you select, or any target that you select. So we're going to start with the Redshift source. I'm going to say Redshift dash. We have the customer dimension there. So I'm going to say customer. And the node type, you know, this is a source that's that's been previously crawled into the Glue catalog, so I can simply select that. And here in the source, select the database. And we've seen previously, it's been pre-crawled under this database and select the table that we want to use, which is the customer table. Now let's add the second node that we want, which is the MySQL. Uh, and this can be any uh, transaction source in your on-prem, that you previously crawled into the catalog. Similarly, this Redshift can be any other source that, that you previously crawled, uh, can be your on-prem as well. So MySQL dash product reviews. So I'm gonna say review data set. Then again, this is something we pre-crawled. So I'm gonna select JDBC and the database, which is Amazon reviews, and then the table, which is the reviews data set. So now that the nodes are added, one of the common tasks that the developers would do is to clean the data before they did the join or denormalization, right? And the cleaning the data, some of the common tasks are changing the names of the columns, uh, excluding or filtering certain columns that they don't need, um, changing the data types in the source, and we're gonna do all of that here in this next step. So this developer would then select a new node and here the name would be, I'll say, um, you know, customer dash clean the data sets. And this would be a transform apply. And I'm going to strongly recommend you uh, or encourage you to learn about these rest of the transforms, what they truly mean and, and before you use your first job. So here I'm going to select my parent. So I'm going to select Redshift customer as the uh, first uh, table I'm going to do the transformation on. So here I can 
the developer can basically change the names of the columns uh, to whichever the developer likes and uh, also change the data type here if the developer choose to do that. So I'm going to leave these uh, data types as is uh, from this data warehouse, and then I'm going to drop a few PII columns that I don't want, like the phone number, the customer name, and the address. Definitely not something that are necessary. So the next step is I'm going to click plus and do the same for the reviews data set, and I'm going to say review dash three. And here, select the parent, uh, sorry, the transform as the apply mapping and go to transforms. And here I have my, oops, let me just double check. Yeah, that's not a parent. The parent is MySQL review and then go to the transform. And here you can see all of the columns. And here I leave the names as is, but then you can see the data types on a change here definitely to an integer. And uh, the the review ID, like maybe the review date, I want to change it to a date. Uh, let's change this to a date, so like that. And then finally, the customer ID, I want to keep it as long. There you go. And let's exclude a few columns from here that we don't need. I, I don't need the marketplace, you know, um, perhaps the few columns like the review headline, et cetera, right? So I'll leave the rest. Now, the data set is clean and it's ready for a join between two different sources and, and an actual transform to be built for the join. So I'll click a plus sign, and here I'm gonna say join dash review data set and, and review transform rather. And here the node type is actually a join transform. And if you notice, as I can type that join, it actually comes up and then I and I create it, and then join requires two nodes. So I'm gonna use both of my clean uh, data sets to to be a part of the transform. And now I'm going to select the inner transform. I can I can choose others also if I need be need to, but um, that would be good enough for this. So here in the review data set, I'm going to select my join key, which is my customer ID. And here in the customer table, I also have my customer ID, which I'm going to select as the join parameters or conditions. I can always check the output uh, just making sure this this um, schema is accurate and, and that's good so now that i did the join finally i want to write it into a data lake in s3 and then create a catalog off of it so that's what i'm going to do and here i'm going to name this as review customer denom and this is a node type which is target and i'm going to select the target as a s3 target and here I'm going to create a prop few properties for the format. I, I, can, I can choose any of these. I'll just select CSV for the time being. So I'm going to choose this and create a new catalog at the end of the table for this entry, this is, which is what's appropriate for my, for my um, use case. So select the database. So I'm going to just use another database like my um, demo DB, which is you know pretty much an empty data database. And then the table, I'm going to say um, demo customer review table. I, I can optionally select the partition based on the column that I'll query the most, and I'm going to leave it for now. And that's about it. Now I have everything that the job requires. Now, at any point in time, the developer can click on the scripts tab, and you can see Glue Studio writes the code that the developer can actually take this and do a unit testing. And it's strongly recommended to perform unit testing here. And, and the recommended approach is to copy this uh, script and use a Glue development endpoint, uh, which is basically a Jupyter notebook using cells, and then use this code and create the cells and make sure you do the unit testing, thereby you're basically failing fast on any single steps and, and making sure everything is working, right? 
before you're going back to make any changes here, like the join conditions are correct and, and that you're actually getting everything you need. Uh, now, one thing I'll point out is if you use this code and, and taken it out from this Glue Studio and, and went to test it, if you modified any code, any of this code outside of Glue Studio and tried to bring it back here, that will not work. You will have to use the Glue Studio to make any changes or edits to this particular, uh, you know, studio uh, canvas, and then obviously the code that it creates. We we do not want to import existing or custom code that you created. Just so you know. So it's all good for me. I'm going to hit save, and at this point, I'm ready to run. Once the job is run, you you can click this run run stat to see the progress. This is a live view. This is you know pretty much real time. You can hit on any of these logs here to watch it, or you can go to the central monitoring tab we've seen earlier and then scroll further down to look at the job that we've created and, and, and you'll see it's running. All right, let's recap what you've learned today. You've learned the fundamentals of Glue Studio, what components and capabilities exist within the studio, and did a walkthrough of IDE and then authored uh, for your first job using Glue Studio and also looked at how to use Glue Studio as a central single pane of glass when monitoring your Glue jobs. With that, thank you for watching this video, and I'm going to look forward to see you in the, in the next video.